Hello, my name is Dani Valkova and I'm an audio director, a creative director and a composer in the realms of linear and interactive media. Very excited to be chatting with you today about the new frontier of immersive audio and what that means for our users, our brands and our audience. How do we unlock the capabilities and how can we make sure that we're not left behind in today's noisy world? What we'll be covering today is going over where we currently are in the world of immersive audio and where we're stepping into. From there, we'll discuss what problems is immersive audio looking to solve and how are we looking to solve them? What sonic branding opportunities exist in the immersive space and how are they accessible by both brands and artists? And finally, what are the next steps as we move into the next frontier of immersive audio? It is a very busy space and there are a lot of brands and artists out there with quick accessibility trying to be heard. So it is more imperative now more than ever that we understand what this space holds and how it can be best utilized for the benefit of our brands and our artists moving forward. It is a brand new area and it is evolving every day. So understanding the lingo and understanding the capabilities both from creatively and technologically is paramount in understanding how we can strategically use this technology for the benefit of our users and brand partnerships. So where are we at currently with immersive audio? Well, we started off traditional audio in terms of linear audio. In this sense, we're talking about what we know as normal ads, ad campaigns, um, film, uh, anything that is linear. So there isn't a lot of user interaction or audience interaction there. Everything is in a stereo field. We normally have a left speaker and a right speaker. It can also be mono, uh, but it does always have a beginning, a middle and an end. And our audience can't really get in there and understand exactly what's going on. And it does not exist in a 3D space. From there, we entered the world of immersive surround sound. When we use those words, we're talking about things like Dolby, surround sound home theater, binaural, and anything to do with 3D mapping where we have introduced more than just left and right on a flat plane, but we also are now working with up and down. So we're creating a 3D space environment. Our next frontier in immersive audio is what I would like to call immersive sound 2.0. What that means is taking what we have already achieved with surround sound Dolby and adding an additional layer. And that is the layer of interactivity. Where immersive surround sound created a 3D space, but the user and the audience remained locked in place at that point. What we are achieving and what we're moving forward to with Immersive 2.0 is adding a, lay a layer of interaction where the user is actually allowed to move into that space and the audio adapts around them to match what they're interacting with, what they're close to, the proximity. And in that way, they are in the driver's seat to tell the narrative in the way that they are connected with it. Think of things as the ground up. We have the 3D room of Immersive 1.0, and then at 2.0, uh, we unlock the user and give them the freedom to roam. The more freedom we instill into our users and our audience, the more empowered they feel to participate in our experiences, and the more empowered they feel, the stronger their connection to the message that we're delivering. Turning our attention now to, all right, we have this new frontier of technology. We are able to utilize sound and music and connect with our brands um, in ways we've never been able to do before. But what problem does this solve? Why would we even want to engage with immersive audio? What benefits can it deliver to our projects, um, to our artists and uh, to our brand awareness? I'd like to start this with a few key takeaways from the data perspective. The first is the increase of to user impressions by incorporating sound alongside the visuals. Data has shown that the minute we have immersive audio, the minute we are engaging with our audience uh, through sound, 
we are much more likely to have that click-through rate. We're much more likely to have our users uh, pique their interest, get them excited, evoke their curiosity, and encourage them to engage with our experience. Leading in through this, once we do have them in that experience, utilizing immersive audio has shown an increase to the length of time a user remains in the experience. It is that sense of curiosity, that excitement, their ability to continue to explore the space and discover something new when they feel that they are in the driver's seat that keeps them engaged with our projects. The longer we have our audience engaged with our projects and our brands and artists, the deeper those connections uh, to those brands are and the deeper the sense of loyalty, giving us more fruitful, more beneficial and more long-term connections with our audience. And finally, a little bit of science. Anytime we engage multiple parts of our senses, it is shown that that helps uh, memory retention uh, and, and the campaign message or the message behind our brands are much more likely to stick through the long term. In that way, we deepen our connection to our users and brands. Moving away from uh, the data bits and pieces, the problem that immersive audio can help us solve is the problem of realism and disconnection. We are more globalized than ever before, and yet we are in some ways further apart than ever before. Being able to recreate what we have in the physical world through virtual experiences in our living room, in our headphones, gives us a sense of realism to connect with our audience that way as though they're standing right in front of us. It is as though that brand, that artist is connecting with you personally and you are engaged in their universe. This is the first time in technological history that we're able to do this with sound and sound is such an important part to the way that we connect to artists and brands. Thirdly, the problem that immersive audio looks to solve, again, is the issue of connection. The connection we have to artists and brands is enforced, is strengthened through immersive audio, especially when it comes to our younger audio members, our audience members. Most brands think of audio in traditional settings. Think of TVCs, linear ads, uh, occasionally it's consumed um, at a store or some sort of pop-up. But traditional media is consumed less and less by the younger generation. It is, for example, in a sense of a YouTube ad where it is very traditional, it is very linear, there's nothing really going on um, other than that one sound bed with sound design in the background and we skip it most of the time. Our younger audience now are found in the realms of um, the metaverse, of VR, of games, of things that help them interact with their space in a virtual sense. If, we are, if one of the key metrics of our um, campaigns is to reach the younger audience, then we must make noise for them where they are hanging out. And they are hanging out in immersive environments. And understanding how audio fits into that immersive environment is paramount to making a connection with them. And finally, what problems does immersive audio solve? Uh, featuring multiple tracks in an interactive space packs opportunities for sync and licensing deals for our artists far beyond what is achievable through traditional media. This also increases the opportunity for us to be very strategic and selective in our sonic branding. Immersive audio unlocks many new opportunities for our brands through strategic use of sonic branding. But what new opportunities does it unlock for our artists and how can they really utilize this new technology to further their reach to their audience? For this, we turn our attention to sync deals and licensing. Yes, as things stand now, uh, in order to enjoy immersive audio uh, when thinking about artist albums or artist songs, there are a few hoops and hurdles that um, your audience must jump through in order to access your content in that way. Uh, first of all, they must have access to hardware that is able to deliver sound through surround sound Dolby Atmos, especially. Think things like surround sound home theatres or special headsets um, and uh, headgear. Outside of that, uh, 
all of that domain still needs to exist on a streaming platform uh, that supports that method as well. Think things like Apple Music or Tidal now as well. But if we only think of the benefit that immersive audio delivers to artists as existing solely within the way that they deliver their current album and song range, then that is a dangerous underestimation of the power and the potential of immersive audio. Where things get really interesting is what doors are unlocked in terms of brand relationships and the deals that artists and brands can get to get through two together in order to advance both of the brand awareness collectively. In this sense, there is a spectrum, if you will, on how much creative freedom and how much involvement each part of that collaboration uh, participates in. On one side of the spectrum, we have something where the brand partnership and the artists are still quite separate in the way that they, they deliver their content. And on the other, it's much more collaborative and intertwined. To give a quick example of both sets of uh, the spectrum, uh, I'll start with the first. So this is a very typical example where there's a, a brand partnership <clears throat> for a certain artist. And that artist, say, for example, would like to do something in uh, the VR, uh, the metaverse, any of those spaces for their music. What they can do is enter a collaboration whereby uh, a certain purchase of a brand's product gives them a ticket or an admission to an online experience, uh, a digital experience to be had in a VR world, in the metaverse, in any of, of those platforms that do support immersive audio. And in there lies the artist concert. The only way the user can have that access to the artist, that sense uh, of being part of a concert that they potentially may not be able to attend otherwise due to price, location, travel, all of those logistical things, all of those barriers are now eliminated and they're able to attend the concert by way of accessing um, the product of the brand. So the brand product is sold, the, um, the sale of uh, the product gives them admission into the immersive audio experience of the artist, and then they are pushed forward in the user experience to have that experience with the artist in an immersive audio space. In that way, the immersive audio space experience with the artist acts as a motivator, as a catalyst for the sale for the brand at the beginning. Those are two quite separate things. So the artist is still in control entirely of the experience within the concert and the brand exists as a separate entity controlling uh, the sale of the product and there's not too much of a, a mismatch or, or an interaction between the two. On the other side of the spectrum, other opportunities exist for artists and brands to work alongside each other in an immersive space in a more collaborative fashion. One example of this is say creating a 3D immersive audio space by which the user can move around the 3D space and in each corner of the room, a different um, immersive audio uh, sound, song, a part of the album is shared with them. As they near that part of the room, the room sonic bed transforms and it is as though that artist is performing personally in front of that user at that point in time. As they move to another point of the room, a different song comes about. As they navigate around the room, different music comes around, swirls around them. One way this can be utilized is as the user moves around the room, it goes through the back catalog and the history of the artist. Now, think of this as matching and being paralleled with a brand partnership. Say that brand partnership is with a brand where the room is transformed um, into a place in history for that brand. Perhaps it could be how a retail store looked like around the same time as that song came out or that artist had a monumental moment. So the music and the visuals are acting like a time travel, uh, going through history to give a sense of um, identity to both the artist and the brand. In this way, the communicated message for the artist and the brand are the same. You are part of my history. I'm taking you on a journey through time with me. And that's how a sense of deeper loyalty, deeper understanding can be built with both the artist and the brand. In the immersive audio space, 
the laws of time and physics dissolve. And it is within them that the limitations of sound dissolve too. The potential for brands and artists to connect with their audience is only limited by our creativity. All right, so we have discussed how we got here in the immersive audio space. What is Immersive 2.0, the next frontier in immersive sound? We've discussed what problems immersive audio looks to solve for our users and how we can utilize uh, its advantages, both from a brand perspective and from an artist's perspective. But what are the next steps? What are the key takeaways here? How can we move into that space from here on in? A few key tips. The first one, the importance of speaking to your client about the opportunities, the benefits and the power of utilizing immersive audio from the start of a project. It should never be an afterthought. It should be ingrained into the way that we move creatively from pitch to delivery of a project. With that, the utilization of an audio director, an audio specialist that is able to work alongside the director and the creative director to understand the vision of the project and understand on a very intricate level what audio needs to be implemented and how, and how that can be best utilized in the platform that the experience lives in. And finally, don't be afraid to take risks or you'll get left behind. Linear sound is in the past. Interactive, spatial and 3D audio is our future. It is the key to connecting to our audience. It is the key to connecting to our users. The strength of the platform needs to be understood. The needs of the users need to be understood and translating that with sound as a signpost in the user journey are the solutions to be heard in tomorrow's noisy world. My name is Danny Balkova. It's been a pleasure to speak with you today. It's a topic I'm very passionate about and I appreciate the opportunity to have a chat about it with you all today. And if anyone else wants to reach out and have a chat, you can find me on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm.